post humanism is one of the most important constituents of the post modernist movement and post structuralist movement or movements you know i often have this tendency to pluralize things because after post modernism things are plural there is no single unified movement uh, called post modernism there are multiple things now post humanism post means after and human humanism obviously is clear to all of us though it is not very clear as we will understand rightly i mean right now it signals the end of belief in humanism so sometimes this is called anti humanism also now this is a very surprising thing you know uh, one might be thinking i mean it's rather counter intuitive that how can a theorist or a thinker or philosophy be anti humanist you know then should not they be put in jail because all these years i mean throughout our existence at least from the uh, time of the renaissance or you know intensified by the discourses of french revolution the french revolution liberty fraternity equality all that we have been doing is to assert humanism the rights of the human in india you know two important renaissance figures may be quoted of the indian renaissance vivekananda said that only men are wanted the rest will be taken care of shudhu manush chai ashok hoye jeebe so man we need so or tagore said that it is the grievous most grievous sin to lose faith on man you know you may not have faith on god but must have faith on man so the, these are the intrinsic reward these are the rewardings of the intrinsic message of the humanist philosophy that man is the center and it's all started with the enlightenment you know putting man at the center but of course eco critics and other people will also tell us that in the western culture at least in the judo abrahamic tradition you know man was always the center because the bible says that god created man to rule over all birds and beasts not so in the pagan culture not so in the hindu buddhist or jain culture where we want to live in um, you know more peaceful or harmonious existence nature so if you read the entries on ecology or eco criticism rather you will find this but anyway so humanism is a man centered approach and then the enlightenment humanism is a rational man centered approach one has to be rational if you are not then you must be put in the madhouse as fuku explored famously the politics of putting so many unemployed people in madhouses in the name of or in the pretext of treating madness so there is politics in it madness and civilization now complete translation is available in english the one that we read or we i started reading when i was doing my phd i have come to know only recently that this is a very truncated version of the main book this is not the whole book the publishers also did not write it and a new book has been available for this information actually i am grateful to professor salimullah khan of bangladesh who is one of the uh, leading intellectuals of asia i would say anyway but uh, so enlightenment prioritized or privileged the idea of a particular kind of man but again man not woman there is so much of controversy regarding what role women had or what role were expected of women or what role women were allowed to play in the so called enlightenment anyway the project enlightenment prioritized the idea of a rational man who is the center or major of everything so it was against the religious superstition uh following the biblical dogma all this had been there since renaissance but the enlightenment coded or encoded it like never before and the crux of this encoding we find in immanuel kant's essay was this of clarang that is what is enlightenment and much later fuko critique that enlightenment of kant writing an essay with the same title now we have come to one of the main person anti humanist person there is a video on youtube which is available you will find the great fight big fight between chomsky and foucault uh, chomsky still alive which is very respectable i know and perhaps the greatest intellectual alive and of all intellectuals possibly foucault is way greater i mean i will tell you in some other video 
but if you do not understand the meaning of anti-humanism you might think that they are terrorists not that Foucault was anarchist but not terrorist here what is at stake is not going against the human as a biological being who is important but attacking the idea of man as propounded by or propagated by enlightened man that a rational man and actually by implication a rational european man has the privilege to control all other men and women of color and uh, white women also children so kant famously or now infamously defined enlightenment as the journey from immaturity to maturity what is immaturity he is not talking about childhood immaturity quote unquote but when we become adult we cannot take decisions and i greatly admire kant and i think in it in the indian situation we need kant now because we had not had that kind of enlightenment we had long back in the time of buddha but in the world did not have so first let us have enlightenment then we can become anti enlightenment this is of course my personal view anyway so your guru decides what a uh, course you will take your coach or life coach or death coach whatever we have these days they tell you which career you should take your parents decide you know which girl you would marry hypocritical you know men many indians are i would say they would have a, have a affair with many quote unquote but then many according to parents you are still date though the trend is changing why because you don't want to take responsibility so kant was very much angry with that that this so called immaturity actually is a result of our unwillingness to take responsibility because then if the marriage goes bad we can say oh this was my father's choice and this was my mother's choice i did not want to study say i may english but my grandfather asked me to or my maternal uncle told me to so it is not that we devoutly or innocently follow people but there is politics in us also but anyway after kant wrote and so many things happened european people by and large moved out of this so they had now the other extreme at the other extreme too much of individuality anyway but then what happened is that is prioritizing the rational man a rational european man as the measure of everything marginalized oppressed so many other people and in fact created so many others the uh, the quote unquote mad people the colonized people the homosexuals the women so all these are victims of this enlightenment idea of men so why should we cling on to that that is anti humanism so fuko wants to kill that man althusar a decided fighter against he declared that he is a post structuralist uh, he is against the idea of man of uh, as propagated by you know enlightenment deluge and gothari also very important so on and so forth but this three are prime fuko deluge and gothari and althusar and then we can add on fukuama end of history and the last man so this this is all the all of them are against the man centric or rational man centric approach of enlightenment which for the english people since we are we have borrowed english we are also in a extended english people for which for english people was espoused in a very beautiful epigrammatic line by pope alexander pope not the pope of vatican the pope was a master of epigram anyway so he says presume then not forgot to scan the proper study of mankind is man so be man centric not god centric but the postmodernists found that this man of enlightenment is not at all a universal man it is rather a european rational uh, white european not black european again heterosexual not homosexual and a patriarchal not feminist that kind of a man whose idea and whose values are being promoted so be like a hero vivekanand also said be on this so many things are there so that is why they are against it so i hope uh, it is clear now what is meant by post humanism or post uh, you know anti humanism that is humanism is not human at all it is a kind of hetero european masculine humanism i would like to call it thank you